first at four, storms popping up on the radar. You'll need to keep an eye on the weather tonight. Stay right here for the forecast. Paula? Hi, Sandra. It's the end of an era in Detroit. An icon, truly an international icon, is closing its doors in the city of Detroit, but not because it wants to. I'll explain. Thanks, Paula. Also ahead, taking aim at President Trump. New developments on this Friday in that nasty Twitter war. But up first, a mystery on Detroit's west side. A woman found dead inside a home. But that is just the beginning of this heartbreaking story. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sandra Ali in for Karen Drew today. First at four, we start with a look at your radar and you can see some storms popping up and things could get uglier tonight. Let's get right over to the first forecast with Andrew Humphrey, who's in today for Ben. Hey, Andrew. Hey there, Sandra. Well, it's hot. It's sticky out there. You can really feel the humidity and that leads to thunderstorm activity. You can see it popping up here in our south zone, also in parts of Washtenaw County, but you can see lightning showing up as well. You can see that from Adrian stretching into Monroe County. This first wave of storms, that's right, first wave. There's more expected. Expected to move through areas in Washtenaw County, southern Wayne County between now and 430. So heads up for places like Milan, Saline, Rockwood. You'll be feeling the effects with first some light rain, then quickly some heavier rain thunder and lightning as well and some gusty winds between now and about 424. So within the next 24 minutes and a lot more rain down to our south and west yet to move through the area as we go through this evening. This whole batch of thunderstorms right here in Indiana that is set to move through us as we go through this evening. So storms generally arriving through Detroit and southeast Michigan between now and 6 p.m. Then buckle up for a bumpy ride between 6 and 10 p.m. with storms becoming more widespread. Lightning, downpours causing some minor flooding and high winds a possibility. We'll go over this once again, your complete holiday weekend forecast in just minutes. We're tracking breaking news right now from New York City. That's where police say several people have been shot at the Bronx Lebanon Hospital. There is not a lot of information at this point on any potential casualties. We have just learned, though, the shooter is a former hospital employee who may have been walking the halls in a lab coat. Right now, NBC News is reporting the shooter has been killed, and now they have to search the floors of the hospital to check for any additional victims. Of course, we're going to keep an eye on the situation, and we will bring you updates as we get new details. Also today, first at four, the search for answers continues this afternoon after a woman's body is found inside a vacant home on Detroit's west side. Police found the woman's body and her four young children inside the home. That home is on Braille Street. They found them late last night. The woman wasn't wearing any clothes and had suffered multiple stab wounds. Neighbors say the family started squatting there about a month ago, but it was clear the woman loved her children. I'm a misser. Cause I, I I loved her, I loved her. She is a beautiful person. Kids beautiful. Neighbors tell us the children were taken away by authorities, and police say right now they are investigating. Former Michigan State gymnastics doctor Larry Nasser faces three more alleged victims in court today in Eaton County. Three of his alleged victims testified during this preliminary exam. Now we can't show you the victims, but the judge said their testimony was very credible and enough evidence to send Nasser to trial. In this case, Nasser faces seven counts of first degree criminal sexual conduct. Nasser faces numerous charges and lawsuits across the state. A Gross Point Woods woman will now spend the next 27 to 50 years in prison for a crash that killed a FedEx truck driver. That crash happened back in February when Maya Batts blew through a stop sign on Detroit's east side and then hit a FedEx truck. The driver in that truck, 46-year-old Roderick Motley, was ejected from the truck and later died at the hospital. Batts was intoxicated at the time of the crash. Testing is underway right now to determine if a boil order in parts of Monroe can be lifted. And right now that order remains in effect. E. coli was found in the water supply. This was affecting areas along Lapliance Road and south of Hull Road to the south end of Bowles Harbor. Now the city doesn't expect any test results until at least tomorrow morning. That's at the earliest and then they will determine their next step. The two hosts of MSNBC's Morning Joe are firing back at President Trump today over his Twitter attack against them. Devin joins us now from the newsroom on the new allegations they're making now against the president. Devin? 
Well, it's been quite an odyssey so far, Senator, because yesterday morning the president shocked even his Republican colleagues on Capitol Hill when he went after Joe Scarborough and Mika Brzezinski, calling Scarborough a psycho and claiming Brzezinski showed up at his Mar-a-Lago estate bleeding from a facelift. Well, now the two cable TV hosts say the president and the White House used the National Enquirer to threaten them and change their news coverage. We got a call that, hey, the National Enquirer is going to run a negative story against you guys. And it was, um, you know, uh, Donald is friends with, the president is friends with the guy that runs the National Enquirer. And they said, if you call the president up and you apologize for your coverage, uh, then he will pick up the phone and basically spike the story. I had, wow. I will just say three people at the very top of the administration calling me. And the response was like, are you kidding me? Well, after Scarborough made those comments on this morning's show, the president tweeted, watch low-rated morning, uh, morning Joe for first time in long time, fake news. He called me to stop a National Enquirer article. I said no, bad show. But Scarborough then quickly responded with his own tweet to deny that he had called the president, claiming he has texts from White House aides to prove his side of the story. So, Sandra, this feud doesn't look like it's going to end up anytime soon. We'll see how it impacts the president and his agenda uh, moving forward. Back yeah, to you. It seems to get uglier, really, by yeah, the day. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Devin. President Trump also causing some health care confusion with another tweet today. Republican senators have postponed a vote on their new plan to overhaul the health care system. Earlier this morning, the president tweeted, and this is a quote, if Republican senators are unable to pass what they are working on now, they should immediately repeal and then replace at a later date. Many Republicans have resisted repealing Obamacare without having a replacement at the ready. It's still not clear what impact, if any, the tweet will have on any negotiation. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is hoping for a vote after the 4th of July recess. Here at home, many Detroiters are saddened this afternoon to hear a historic Motown business is closing its location in the city. We're talking about Henry the Hatter doing business now for more than 100 years. Paula Tutman is live now. And Paula, why is the store closing and is there any chance that maybe it will stay in the city? Well, those are a lot of questions still to be answered, but Sandra, I can tell you that I have been in this city long enough to remember when there were only a few places to eat, and one of those was a subway near the courthouse. But this is the look of progress now, the super trendy punch bowl social right down the street. That becomes the anchor of Broadway. You look this way, Henry the Hatter is a staple, but not for much longer. Henry the Hatter has been in this spot on Broadway in Detroit for 65 years. It is catered to celebrities and judges. This is where I can get my styles, my colors, and my variety at Henry the Hatter. Henry the Hatter. Visitors and everyday people alike. Here, everyone is a celebrity and walks out feeling like a million bucks. You can't get this experience anywhere else. The staff here never let me leave in a hat that would make me look bad. It's a real institution in this community. It's an institution that was here before the riots, during, and stayed even when other businesses grabbed their hats and ran. And now it sits along a hot block in the resurgence of the city. President of Henry the Hatter, Paul Wasserman, says he's happy to be a part of the comeback, but for what he calls a disturbing note from his landlord, Sterling Group, a holding company in Detroit. We're not leaving by choice. In March, I wrote our landlord a letter and asked to be extended, and I got back a letter from their attorney terminating me, which was their right under the lease, and evidently they think they can do better with this building without me as a tenant. When word got to the mayor's office this morning, they immediately dialed in to see what could be done to keep Henry the Hatter in Detroit, even if not at this location. Long-time Detroit businesses matter in this city. If we're talking about where we as the city are going, what makes us so special are those businesses that have been here and the new businesses. So it's the, that blend that we're able to achieve, and that matters a lot to us. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, a steady stream of people today came to the store when they heard the news. And I was ho hoping that I could bring my child here to get his first hat at this store, and I'm sure that other people have done the same thing. Let me see how it looks. It's just kind of serendipitous that August 5th, the day we chose for our last day, would have been my father's 101st birthday. It just kind of worked that way. 
And so Paul Wasserman told me he doesn't know if this is a case of he just can't afford the rent anymore. He says he was never given an opportunity to even find out. His lease was simply terminated. I did reach out to Sterling Holdings this afternoon, did not hear anything. I also reached out through the mayor's office. I can tell you that the mayor's office, however, is going to try to find some sort of match program in hopes they can keep Henry the Hatter somewhere in the city of Detroit. Meanwhile, they leave August 5th but their Southfield store, Sandra, remains open. All right, that is good for customers to know at least they have the Southfield option. Thank you so much, Paula. Still ahead, first at four, the Beyonce and Jay-Z musical soap opera continues. Find out why people are talking about the lyrics now in his new songs. Also ahead, one woman's story about her experience with a police officer is now going viral. Wait until you hear what he did for her. But first, this man in trouble for an anti-Muslim assault. What he did to a mother and daughter that will now put him behind bars. And we continue to follow that breaking news right now out of New York City. That's where police say at least three people have been shot. This is at the Bronx Lebanon Hospital. The shooter was walking the halls, we're being told, wearing a lab coat, hiding a rifle inside that coat. Police have confirmed the shooter has been killed. Stay with Local 4. We're going to bring you new updates as we get more information both on air and always on clickondetroit.com. Dance. Coming up all new on Local 4 News at 5 and 6. If you saw a car running from police, would you try and step in? One local man did, and tonight at 6, that good Samaritan sharing how he stopped a dangerous pursuit and why. The story later on Local 4. This British man right here has been jailed for hitting a Muslim teenager with a slab of bacon and insulting both her and her mother. Alex Chivers was sentenced to six months in jail. He admitted to religious or racially aggravated assault. Witnesses took video of that assault, which came days after extremists had attacked people on London Bridge. British police have reported an increase in hate crimes over the last several weeks. Germany's gay community celebrating a historic day after Parliament votes to legalize gay marriage in that country. Dozens of people gathered in Berlin to celebrate. The new law won't take effect for several months because it now has to, has, has to actually pass the upper house and also be approved by the president. But those are called formalities. One gay couple who's been trying to get married since 1999, they said they're looking forward to finally being able to tie the knot. Well, Andrew is back on this Friday of a big holiday weekend here, and we're <laughs> keeping an eye, of course, on the weather tonight. Yeah, it's off to a stormy start, Sandra, with showers and thunderstorms developing and rolling right over Detroit and southeast Michigan as we speak. Take a look at 4 Live Radar. Now, a reminder, you can take a look at 4 Live Radar also, not only here while you're watching us, but especially when you're on the go with the local forecasters app. You can zoom in close just like we are right now. Take a look closely. In these areas of orange and red, that's where the rain is coming down very heavily from Monroe through the rest of Monroe County toward the Dundee area and along Route 23. And in these areas of deep red, water can pile up very quickly. So at least minor flooding is a possibility. If you come across any standing water, remember, find an alternate route. That being said, heavy rain also coming down in portions of Lenaway County from Tecumseh, also areas just north of Adrian. This batch right here is moving to the northeast at a pretty good rate, around 25 miles per hour. So at that pace, places like Milan, Ypsilanti, Ann Arbor, also in the southern portions of Wayne County. You can expect some of that rain to pile up quickly and get heavier along with this thunder and lightning that you see right here. Dozens and dozens of lightning strikes between now and 435. So within the next 15 to 20 minutes, areas in southern Washtenaw County, southern Wayne County, and then eventually after 430, closer to around 5 o'clock, I think we'll see the skies darken and we'll see some of that heavy rain right here in Detroit as well. And that's not the only wave of showers and thunderstorms. You got this down here in portions of Indiana. You got more here in portions of Northwest Ohio. That's been responsible for flash flood warnings there. There are no warnings or watches here in Detroit or Southeast Michigan yet, but that being said, you want to take precautions. You got those storms head your way. Listen out for any thunder. If you're at the pool, get out of the water, listen to the lifeguards, and again, those safe driving tips. Temperatures will be in the low 80s and 70s at the baseball game, and it's going to be touch and go in terms of the Tigers game later on tonight because of that rain that's pending. You can see on, four, uh, on our live sky cam. Sky's dark, darkening a bit here in Detroit. We've got 83 muggy degrees out there with winds out of the south southwest at around 11 miles per hour. 90, even hotter for our friends in Macomb Township while it's 80 in Ann Arbor, 81 for our friends over in Monroe. 
On the wider view, you can see that we also have dew points that are in the upper 60s to around 70 degrees, giving you an idea of how moist the atmosphere is. So those showers and thunderstorms move through as we go through this evening. They become a bit lighter and more scattered by tomorrow morning. Tomorrow midday with this cold front approaching, another chance of showers and thunderstorms possible. Best day out of this weekend through Sunday looks like it's going to be actually Sunday itself. So as we go through this evening and tonight, showers and thunderstorms continue. Temperatures will be down to around 70 degrees. Sandra will be in the low 80s on uh, Saturday and Sunday. Calmer weather on Sunday, but the showers and thunderstorms come back after the 4th of July. Back over to you. Thank you, Andrew. Most spouses we know talk about personal issues in private, but Jay-Z and Beyonce, they say it with music, the new lyrics that a lot of people are talking about today. Also, a police officer's good deed goes viral. Plus, Amazon finally wins over one of the biggest names in retail. Trending stories coming up next. Welcome back. In today's trending stories, Nike decides if you can't beat Amazon, work with Amazon. The sporting goods company confirming it will launch a test program now to try to sell some of its gear on Amazon.com. Nike had been resisting the idea, but third party sellers were already offering Nike products on the website. The company hoping the deal will give it more control over how its products are marketed on Amazon. It plans to start small, but could expand if things do indeed go well. You may have heard about this. The internet is just buzzing over Jay-Z's new album because it seems to respond to some infamous lyrics on his wife, Beyonce's Lemonade. You might remember Beyonce referred to a mysterious woman, Becky with the good hair. Well, in his new song, Family Feud, Jay-Z uses these lyrics. And this is a quote, I'll bleep up a good thing if you let me. Let me alone, Becky. A man who don't take care of his family can't be rich, end quote. Other lyrics and it took the birth of his first daughter to realize his bad behavior. The couple, as you may have heard, just had twins. They've been married for nine years. Inside Edition has much more on this story coming up after our newscast. This Facebook post from a woman in North Carolina has gone viral after her run in with a police officer. Courtney Bailey was pulled over on Tuesday. She admitted she was speeding, not wearing her seatbelt, and also had an expired inspection. But instead of giving her several tickets, the police officer gave her a break and took her to a garage for a new tire and also for that inspection she needed. He also paid. He went up to pay for the tire. He pulls out his his um, debit card and has his children on it. And the first thing that pops in my mind is like, wait, you're a cop on a cop cell and you're just about to drop $200 on me? You don't know me. I hadn't even told my wife and she saw it and asked me about it. And I said, yeah, that's, that's my stuff. Ah, oh, the officer says he felt a real connection to Bailey and he could tell that she really needed some help. She recently had lost her job and was also on her way to sell plasma for some extra money. Thousands of people who saw her video have reached out, some of them even offering to help her find a new job. Still had a Michigan man reaches a triple digit milestone. The secret to his success and what he's too old to do these days. It's easy to